today's agenda, which is the document object model, as you can see uh, in the slides. Let's do a quick recap of what we've already discussed so far, right? So in the previous session, we've started talking about JavaScript. And again, uh, everything is updated in the repository. So you can just go and check that out. Um, you should be able to find pretty much everything till the previous session. Just the link is not updated yet. I will add that as well. But other than that, everything else is updated. So you can check that out. Uh, next up, coming to the topic. So like I was saying, we started with JavaScript in the previous session. So the focus was majorly on understanding what JavaScript does uh, or what it is responsible for in terms of the workload. right? So we have HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So we were talking about where JavaScript fits in, in that whole setup. And we have discussed that HTML adds content, CSS styles and arranges that content. And the JavaScript is used to add functionality to that content, right? Uh, in terms of running JavaScript code, we have then discussed the developer tools that Chrome gives us. Again, we have taken um, examples and explored different options. Like this button does this. This is a responsive panel. Then the console. Uh, we've also seen where we can see the HTML code. We have also seen where the styles show up. The box model shows up. So I hope you are now familiar with these tools. I will be using a few more of these tools going forward. So when we go to React and we go to the backend, we'll use these tools to check for cookies and other things as well. So that's developer tools. We have already looked at them. Then we focused on the console and we did this, uh, you know, in a couple of different scenarios. We have seen how we can write JavaScript within the browser in the console, um, how most of the errors that show up regarding a project show up in the console. And that's basically what the console is, right? So again, we can leave messages for ourselves and we use the console a lot while testing. So when we start building applications in JavaScript, we will understand this better. Right? So that's that's the console. Then we have seen how to write a script in VS Code. So we have seen how to create a JavaScript file. I have shown you the extension that we need. So the extension is called Code Runner. That extension is needed, right? So that we can run JavaScript code again, We'll write a bunch of JavaScript today as well. So we will need this pretty much in all sessions um, going forward. So I hope you have VS Code installed. Just put a yes in the chat if you have VS Code as well as the uh, Code Runner extension installed. So you need these two things in order to run JavaScript code, right? Uh, then we discussed what HTML plus JavaScript looks like. So we have seen how do you embed a JavaScript code or how do you link to a JavaScript code within HTML, right? So we have seen that to connect with a CSS file, we use the link tag in the head, but to connect to a JavaScript file, we use a script tag as the last line in the body. We've also discussed the reason for this, which is that we need all the content to load up first before we load up the functionality. So that's why we put JavaScript as the last line in the body tag. So we've seen that as well. And that brings us to the different types of data that JavaScript supports. We've discussed this as well quickly. We discussed that these are some of the types of data. We will discuss a couple more things going forward. And we have seen three different types of variables that we can create using var, let, and const. So var is the normal setup. If you don't write anything by default, it is a var variable where we can store some data. Let is a block specific setup. So it is restricted to the block within which we create it. And const helps us create constant values, which is values that do not change. Right? So values that are fixed. And we want them to be fixed throughout the program, like tax rates and um, you know things like that. So that's what we have seen already. This is everything that we have discussed in the previous session, which was session 11. In this one, session 12, we are focusing on a bunch of other things primarily focusing on the DOM. So everything that we do in this session is around this idea of a DOM or a document object model. It is a very, very important concept and you need to uh, be really good at this if you want to explore anything around JavaScript, right? So DOM stands for document object model. And here is a quick example of how that works. So very simply put, whenever we load any document in the browser, whenever we load any HTML document in the browser, what the browser is going to do is it creates something like a tree 
if you can see this on the screen, the browser creates a tree of this manner. This is called the DOM tree. And we call it the DOM tree. So this is like a tree, but inverse, right? So if you consider, compare this to a real world tree, in a real world tree, the root is under the ground. The rest of it is above the ground. So, you know, we have something like this, but in a programming setup, a tree is always reversed. So we have the root at the top over here and then the rest of the setup underneath it, as you can see. Right? So this is how a tree looks like in the DOM sense. Right now, what the browser does is based on the HTML tags that we use based on the structuring or the layout of the HTML tags, it creates a tree like you can see on the screen. Right. So at the root element, we have the HTML. That's the root of the tree. Then we have head and body. Right? Those are the elements that we create in the boilerplate. We already know this. Then head contains other elements like title, link, meta. Body can contain a div, it can contain an A tag. Then the div can further contain H1. We can have header, footer, nav, all these other sections. So this entire setup is done inside the body, right? So based on our HTML code, or rather based on the way we structure our HTML code, what the browser does is it creates a tree of this thought. This is called the DOM tree or the element tree. So basically, what JavaScript lets us do is it lets us control every single aspect of this tree. That is why we call it DOM manipulation, document object model manipulation, right? So we can basically do anything that we want. For example, let us say that we want to add a new element to the screen. Well, we can do that with the help of JavaScript, right? Let's say that in this div, in addition to this heading, we also want to put a paragraph. We can very easily do that with the help of the uh, DOM, right? the JavaScript methods that are available for the DOM. Let's say we want to detect this link and we want to change its color in terms of style. We can do that. Let's say we want to read this body and we want to change its background color. We can do that. Right? We can add elements, remove elements, modify elements, change their styles, access their content, do everything that we can possibly think of with this particular tree called the DOM tree, right? So again, this is what the DOM tree is. It's basically our HTML template laid out like so, wherein we have the HTML root element at the top and then everything else is divided into different levels. So again, head and body are at one level, then whatever is inside the head is the uh, is inside the head level and everything is that is inside the body is inside the body in the tree, as you can see. Uh, there are Google Chrome extensions that can help you see this tree or visualize this tree if you like so you can find extensions for chrome that will help you to do this but again we will not focus on them they are just again we don't really need to know about this tree i'm just telling this to you so that we understand how it actually works right so again whenever we give an html file the browser is going to create a tree from this html file and that tree can be controlled or manipulated using JavaScript. So that is the setup, right? Perfect. Now let me show you a couple of different things that we can do using this tree one by one. So at this point, I'm going to open up VS code. Uh, just give me one minute. I'm not sure why the recording was paused, uh, but yes, no worries. Anyway, we use YouTube live for that. So yes, let me just open up. Yes, sir. The... I YouTube link is there, sir. I share to YouTube for students. Yeah, sure. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I share to student for YouTube live, sir. So YouTube, uh, live recording you share, no issue. Yeah, 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 okay. So we don't want to record this. Just on no issue, sir. Just I YouTube only YouTube. Okay. Right, so I'm just opening up VS code. Just give me one second. I'll just share it on the screen and then we should be good to go. Right, here it is. So I'll just share the screen. You should be able to see it now. Um, Yes, so here is my VS code. I've just made a new folder right, so that we can start from scratch. 
So let's go for a simple HTML file. I'll just use the boilerplate to add it. I'll also add a styles.css. It can be empty for now. And then I'll also create a script dot or script.js file. Either way, you can call it whatever you want. Let's link to our CSS. So we already know how to do this. We have done this a lot of times. And then we can connect to our JavaScript like this. So the script tag contains a source attribute. And then over here, we have to type the name of the file. Even though the tag is empty, we still need a closing tag. Because technically speaking, we can put JavaScript code over here between the opening and closing script. But usually we connect to an external script, which is what I have done here, right? So this is what we have in terms of the basic setup. We already know this. We have seen this in the previous session as well, right? Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and see how can we start working with the document object model. So the very first thing that we are looking at is manipulating HTML using JavaScript. So this again is simply to say that we should be able to pretty much control everything regarding an element using JavaScript. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this. So for example, the first thing that I'm going to do is I will just add a heading over here. Let's say this is a heading. I know it's, it doesn't really make sense. It's a very simple piece of code. But now what we want to do is we want to first of all detect this element in JavaScript, right? So we want to be able to detect this element in JavaScript. Now there are a bunch of different ways in which we can do this. Right? There are actually seven, eight different ways um, to do this. And the choice depends on you. It depends on the setup or the project that you are creating, right? So for now, all we have at this point is H1. So all we know that the element contains or is, is a heading. So what we can do is we can say in JavaScript, let's H1 or let's heading is equal to, we have something called document. Now document is basically, an, again, so document object model, right? D-O-M. Document object model basically gives us access to something called as document. This document contains a lot of functions which we can use. For example, we have something like document dot get element, get element by name or tag name, get element by tag name, right? So this particular function, what this will do is this will help us pick an element that we want, right? So you can see what I have done is I have said this will actually be headings because it will select every heading on the page. So again, very simple. What we are doing here is we are basically saying let headings equal to document dot. So from the HTML document, get elements by tag name. So get every element that you can find that has this tag H1. So effectively what this is going to do is it is going to read everything from the page, which is an H1. Right now we only have one heading. It will, it will read that. Let me add another heading and I will just say this is another heading. Now we have two H1s on the page, right? So this line of code is going to detect both headings or read both headings from the page. How can we check this? We can simply print it out. We can say console.log headings. Let's check. So again, for this, we need to open this in the browser. So let's open it with live server. This should open up Chrome for us, as you can see. And now within this, just take it out. Now within this, if you can see, I go to the console. So that's inspect and then console, right? Once we go to the console, we should be able to see the output and you can see that over here. And you can see there is this drop down. And when I expand on it, it gives us two headings. H1, this has the content. If I scroll down, see, this is the heading. And this is the first heading. And then we have another heading H1. If I just scroll down, this is another heading. Right. So at this point, what we have been able to do with JavaScript is we have been able to read both of those. Um, right. We have been able to read both of those errors or uh, sorry, both of those headings basically inside JavaScript. So you can see we have zero and one. If I just hover over that, you can see the changes on the left hand side as well. Right. So again, zero and one. This means we have now read or detected all headings, all H1s from the page. So that is how we can do this. If I just go back to the code again, what we're doing is we are saying let headings is equal to 
document dot get elements it is not element it is elements because again there can be more than one elements with this tag h1 right similarly now let's change this so let us say that we have another attribute called class we know that right? there is something called a class let's say the class is um let's just call it hero for example right so there is a class hero let us create one more h1 and this will also get a class of hero let us say this is hero heading for example right so now we have three h1s in total out of which two headings have a class right we have three total headings out of which two headings have a class so assume that we are running the same piece of code can you tell me in the chat what output is expected if we run the exact same piece of code in the chat what will we get in the output without making any changes right now this is our html let me put them side by side so the html code is on the left hand side javascript code is on the right hand side let me just make some space for both so that you can see both of these code pieces side by side there you go so html is on the left javascript is on the right take a minute think about this and tell me without making any changes what would this give us right so i see some confusion uh, in the chat right and that makes sense right it is okay to be confused at this point but again if you just look at the content here we have h1 h1 and h1 so we have three headings and what we are saying in javascript has got nothing to do with the class so effectively it is going to still select every h1 on the page which means it will pick all three headings right it is going to select all three headings so if we go back to our browser and if i just refresh now you will see this time we get three three headings in our collection the first heading the second heading and the third heading right so this will select all three because again we are still using tag name if you give it a class the tag does not change it is still a heading it is a heading first then it gets the class right now there is another method available or another function available which is called get elements by class name right so class name this will look at the class so now if i go back to the browser this time we will get only two headings right? if i see the collection you can see it is empty right now i'm not sure why that is yes because the class name is not h1 the class name is hero so if we change this to hero then you can see this time around we get two headings you can see if i just hover over it we get the first heading and the third heading at the first heading and the third heading so these are the two headings where we have given the class hero as you can see right so this is the second way of reading something from the screen get elements by class name the third approach is of course an id based approach so we can give it an id let's call it special for example and id is going to be unique right id is unique there can be multiple classes or you know multiple elements which have the same class there can be multiple elements with the same tag but an id is unique there can only be one id on the entire page so for that we have something called get element by id right and the id will be special in this case so this time the output that we get is a single heading as you can see so we don't get a collection with a drop down none of that we get single heading as you can see h1 id equal to special that's it because an id is unique so it will only select a single element from the screen right in addition to all of this we have another method called query selector so in the query selector we can actually give a css query for example again we can give a css selector so if i go for h1 then again you will see we should be able to get all three on the screen let me just check this once again and save this right now you can see we have h1 dot hero again so that is the setup with query selector query selector is just like tag name but this will take css queries right so just like we have you know css tag h1 or dot hero or hash special so all of these things can be given to query selector and accordingly it will give us the expected response as you can see 
So now since we have selected special, we are getting special in the output. So these are several different ways in which we can read things. Again, we can either read them all together with tag name. We can read them using class attribute or we can read them using ID. Right? So with ID, we can just say uh, the ID. Again, it will select it with the corresponding ID. So that will be a unique element or a single element on the screen. If there is an ID like that, of course, if there is no element with that ID, then no element will be selected, right? So this is how we can select this or we can select items in the JavaScript setup, right? Using these different methods. Now, which method to apply depends on what you want. If you want to select a single item, we can use the ID approach. If you want to select multiple items, we can go for tag name or class name or query selector. Either way, it will be fine, right? Now, the next thing is after we have selected something, so let's go for the ID approach because we just want to select one for now. We have access to a couple of different things here. Right? So after we select a particular item, as you can see, this is H1, right? We get access to a couple of things. For example, so a heading is basically an object and this object contains a couple of different things. It basically looks, let me just see if I can get that output. There you go. So this is what the heading contains. There are so many attributes, right? And every single attribute is accessible through JavaScript, as you can see. So here you will see two very interesting things. We have something called inner HTML and we have something called inner text. These give us access to the content of the heading, right? The content of the heading. So what we can do is if we go back to our code, right? And if we just change that, to heading dot inner HTML or inner text. This will then give us access to the content. So if I just reload now, you will see instead of seeing the H1, what we are seeing is the content of the heading. This is another heading. We don't see the H1 tag anymore, right? So this is how we can access the content of the heading using inner HTML. Just like this, we have access to every single HTML attribute that element can contain. Right? Everything that we can have. For example, if it is an image, we can access height, width, source like this. Uh, if it is, let's say, a media file, we can access autoplay controls, everything like this. Right? So we just have to say heading, which is element dot and then whatever value we want. Right? So we can access everything from here. Right. That is how it works. OK, so it's very simple. Again, this is how we read something from the screen uh, using the document object model. And then this is how we can access all these values. Now, naturally, if we can access those values, we can also modify them. So what I'm going to do is try to do just that. We'll say heading dot inner HTML or inner text equal to new content. Right. So what we are doing is we are trying to modify the HTML content. If you notice here in HTML, this heading contains this text. This is another heading. But now using JavaScript, what we have done is we have modified that to new content. If you check the output now, you will see we don't get the HTML content. Instead, we just get the JavaScript modified code, which is new content. Why? Because as soon as the HTML document loads up, the script is called and then the script is going to change the content. Right? So this is how we can work with uh, manipulating HTML using JavaScript. So again, every single attribute that we have for any HTML element can be manipulated, can be affected in this way. Right. I hope this is making sense. Let me know in the chat if this makes some sense. And then I'll give you one more example before we move to the next part. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Anuraj, ma'am, is joining. You are uh, taking something to student. Just five minutes. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Anuraj, ma'am. Thank you, Ram. Uh, along with me, uh, also Ajay must be here. So, hi, students. Just uh, I need a quick five minutes uh, from you. How are you all? Please type if you are all doing well. Hello, Sandeep. Yes. Okay, how is the learning coming along? 
Yes, I hope you all remain as beautiful as you are today. So can you, uh, okay, how is the learning coming on well? Okay, all right, excellent. <laughs> mm, yeah, thanks to sir for uh, giving such good uh, uh, training to all of you. So I'm here uh, to tell you quickly few things about a uh, program from IIDT only. As you know, this is IIDT Black Bucks internship. Uh, many of you must be from fourth years and fourth year is quickly coming to an end. You know, April probably you will be closing your BTEC and moving on to new phase of life. So uh, here is where there is one caution I want to tell. Along with that, I want to tell a thing about a postgraduate program also. The caution is during 2019-20 also, whoever has passed out during the COVID-19 period, there were not, there were no jobs, right? Nothing was open that time. So when things opened in 2020 or 2021, when jobs opened, the question that they have asked is, what did you do? Okay, there were no, no, no jobs in 1920. So what did you do? That's the question they have asked. So what should be the answer you tell me? If somebody asks 1920, there is no job. There are no jobs. So if somebody asks, if you go and sit in an interview and anybody asks, okay, no jobs, then what did you do? <laughs> okay, you are an intermediate, but that time whoever has graduated. Yes. Dinesh Reddy says training. It's some business. <laughs> sleeping at home. Focusing on productivity, interning, business, learn languages, deep, learn some courses. Obviously, these are all smart students who have the answers. This is what you will have to tell. Somebody said it is a joke. If you say I'm, I was sleeping, it is a joke. Those students are not joke. They give us such a break when they go and sit in the uh, sitting in the HR interview. The HR asks. Why did you come to this interview? What do you like about our company? One of the students told, I don't like software job. I want to go for higher education. Then HR asks, then why are you coming here and, he, and taking my time? So students do answer like that. Just be very clever when you answer to HRs. So coming back to what I was saying. So if you are graduating this year without getting a job in next two to three months, then do something, right? Do a course or something. Do not say I'm free, I'm searching. Do something, even it is a YouTube free certificate or there are certain free certificate, lot of free certifications are there, Google, Google certifications. So do lots of those certifications, at least that is number one step. Number two step, if you are very, very serious about your job, uh, I want to show something to you in quick 10 minutes or no, no, I'll take just five minutes. So this is what I wanted to show to you. Same IIDT Black Box is conducting a uh, post-registration program in emerging technologies and full stack. It's a post-registration program. You are already a little bit into it. So probably it might be easy for you uh, to understand and uh, go through this postgraduate program. And this postgraduate program is not like MTech. This postgraduate program is very, very, very much uh, focused towards getting job. Okay. So if you ever wanted to study in IIT, IITs, IADT premises, training, Everything is at that level, okay? And uh, I wanted to show you, this is the premises, very beautiful premises at Tirupati. Um, and uh, what are the key aspects about it is established by Dr. Sundar Balakrishna, as I told you. This is a 11-month postgraduate program, only limited students we take because every student, as soon as they join, will be mapped to a company, okay? If, uh, say, for example, I see certain names here, Supriya. Supriya will be mapped to a company. Vishnu Vardhan will be joined to a company. 
Sai Kumar Yarla will be joined to a couple. So as soon as you join, this person will be mapped to a particular company. Okay, this person, every person who joins will be mapped to a particular company so that this, this is called unique company mapping methodology. So every student who joins will be mapped to a company in the industry. Okay, so that the placements becomes very, very easy in that company. So we have tied up with certain organizations. If you go to our black box LinkedIn, you can see already students who are placed exactly in these companies. We have tied up in this company, Enzin and then Mojro, UB, and uh, what is this company's name? So uh, Arni, yeah, Arni and uh, front page. So we have tied up with all these companies. We take the student responsibility completely, take them to the company. This is a place where students are writing the test. Take them to the company and make sure they clear all the uh, questions and interviews. Even professors from IIT Tirupati will teach on this. It is a perfectly planned year and perfectly somebody will take you and place you in the organization. This is that kind of um, postgraduate program. Uh, it is 11 month program. You can do it online. You can do it from uh, Tirupati. You can do it from also Vizac. Okay, so there are different locations that you can do this program from. It is a great program if somebody is very serious and very serious and want to take a safe route to get into a job, try this. Uh, they will paste a link here for the for whoever is interested to try this. People will call you up and explain you more details in this program. But it is a great, excellent program, great smart classrooms you can see on the screen, great meeting rooms, infrastructure is super. Okay, so if you are interested, uh, they will be posting a link here. Oh, it's not free. It is like, how can you get a free, if you get free, entire 4 lakh students of Andhra Pradesh will get join this program because somebody is mapping you directly to a job. Okay, so is works after completion of internship. After this is post graduation. That means after graduation only. This work, this works. So uh, Ram uh, or uh, anybody, if you can uh, post uh, the link where the student can actually. Um, Ram, can you post the link where the student can uh, apply for this? Uh, post yeah, program. I will post, ma'am, two minutes. You already posted. I didn't. No, I, I, okay. I posted, ma'am, two minutes. You will post in two minutes. Okay, okay. Oh. So, students, if you are interested in this program, so I would really recommend this program because there will be uh, not many programs that will directly map you in this. One more thing is in this same organization. You will, uh, you in, in this college, like in uh, uh, in medical colleges, there will be medical college and medical hospital. Like this, there is medical, uh, there is IADT college and then companies in the same premises. So internships, everything will happen in very, very structured format. And finally, they will take you and place you in a company. But there will be small interview for you because this is placement guaranteed program. We will take a small interview before that and see if we can really place you or we cannot place you. Then we will say, no, sorry, we, you take another course, we will tell. But if you are uh, really interested and decent enough, then you can offer, uh, can opt for this program. It is very safe to opt for this program for your careers, okay? Uh, that's about it. Uh, is An um, Anil, uh, is Ajay here? Yes, ma'am. Ajay, can you also talk to students for a minute? Yeah. See, uh, basically, if I talk about this program, it's all about, uh, see, basically, if you talk about, if you go to grow after the graduation, uh, from the any college or for example you talk about Andhra Pradesh we take as an example as Andhra Pradesh it's almost all one lakh plus students are getting uh, graduated every year but how many are getting the placed that is most important part where everyone wants to everyone is studying to get the placement yes 
So this program which we are coming up with the government of Andhra Pradesh and Black Box, which is IICT approved, Black Box Black Box organization is IICT approved, and where we the unique mapping to the students to the program with the corporate companies, where we train on the where we train on the company curriculum. For example, there is a kind of there is a uh, for example if you talk about some Wipro, okay. So we we if some one student has got a mapping to the Wipro, okay. So we the student will going to train on the what what we pro do, what kind of programs we pro runs, okay, what kind of coding we pro do. So everything will be depends upon the program uh, which map which map which company is mapping to you. So that is very easy to get into that company after the program, okay. So your package if you talk about with the salaries and the packages, this program after this program which we are minimum guaranteeing about six lakhs plus. To 21 lakhs. There are one student who got uh, uh, 21 lakhs in uh, previous year. There are some students who got 41, for, uh, sorry, uh, 15 lakhs in pre, uh, before year. So every year the average salary is getting increased. So every student who want to know more about this program, please fill this form, which is displaying on the uh, screen. Please fill this form. Then me, my team will contact you. And explain more about the product, uh, this program, how it runs, how it goes, how many hours of training, uh, who is the faculty, who is the mentors, which kind of companies we have. Everything we're going to discuss on with this offline and online. Both is available. Ria. Question was from Navya. Is this offline or no. both offline in the campus is available? Available. Or yeah. online is available. The price and everything we can discuss over the call uh, when you fill the form. Yes. Okay. All right. That uh, was a short uh, disturbance to your learning. So please continue to learn. And, uh, you know, one more thing I'll have to tell is uh, please do not change your phone numbers. Why are you changing your phone numbers? Whatever you have learned till now will go off. So don't change your phone numbers, give your uh, college number properly. So why do you make so many mistakes just for registration? So backend people are really working so hard whenever you want to change your college name, whenever you want to change your phone number, whenever you want to change, I don't want to this stream, I want to go that stream, so much of hard work. So give proper, don't change it. You, your entire, uh, your history of learning will be lost. Because it is tied with your phone number. Okay, so please remember about, uh, be careful about those particular, it is like you are learning for your learning, for everything, your phone number is very important. Lot of information is stored on the phone number. Okay, with regard, and this program is only after graduation. No, I mean like the admissions are happening now. The classes will start in April, one batch, May one batch. Okay. So admissions you should complete now because it's a small batch. Uh, you feel it, people will call up and explain to you about what are the, uh, okay, this link is useful to us, yes. Pursuing graduation. So all of you are pursuing graduation, I know you are in fourth year, but you will pass right next month. This is March already, next tomorrow it is March, April done your exams done so you will have to apply now to be able to join in april or may or november the internship will be completed by march end for you guys Degree students also eligible. Even if you are BSc students, you are eligible. Bharat, please fill the form. The uh, you know the counselor will call you and explain you all the details. Okay. Uh, so let us uh, go back to the class. Thank you, everyone. Learn well. All the best. Bye. All right.
it yes um hi guys also we are back and yes like we were discussing let us go back to that our uh, discussion so so far we have talked about um two things right one is how to select an element from the screen using javascript so we have discussed several different methods of doing that we have talked about get element by tag name get elements by class name get element by id query selector there are so many different options or ways to do this and then we have uh, also selected or we have also been able to access the content using this object and we have then been able to modify that like so so we have this attribute or property called inner text which is available on all text elements if you go for inner html that's for another purpose i'll tell you more about that but inner text will give us access to the text so text is basically this part right? between the opening and the closing h1 that is the text so that's how this works and then we are modifying it so now if you see the output we are effectively seeing the new content being shown and again why is this happening well because as soon as the body ends we are calling the script so before we can even see anything on the screen the script is running and that script is selecting this heading modifying the content and that is what we are able to see in the output right so this is how we can select or you know choose something from the screen in javascript so this is how we can access and modify html elements using javascript right now in the exact same way what we can also do is we can manipulate css using javascript as well right so just like we get access to all these html elements we also get access to all the css styles how do we do this well we have a very simple way to do this which is heading so whatever element we have selected dot styles so heading dot style and then dot we can put in any css rule or any css property over here for example let us say we have to set underline so we have something like this text decoration we can set its value let's say equal to underline right so this is a normal css property but there's a little bit of a difference right typically in a css file what will happen is if you want to make this text decoration we'll write h1 and then we write it like this right? text decoration underline on the left hand side you can see the css syntax on the right hand side in javascript what we have to do is we don't use these dashes and hyphens instead we use this camel casing right so camel casing is basically something like this where we have the first character small and then the second word from the second word onwards we capitalize the first character so this is what camel casing looks like right so the first word is all lowercase for example first then from the second word onwards what we do is we capitalize the first character so first word is now camel case you can see from the second word onwards we capitalize the first character of every word right that is how this works right so this is basically what we have in terms of css so again very simple we just say heading dot style dot text decoration and then we can change its value so now if we check the output it will be very simple we'll be able to see this underlined as well as you can see in the exact same way now we can change any css property right for example let us say we also want to change the color of the text so we can just change it c o l o r and make it red and this will become red in color right so remember we are not doing this through java uh, through css we are doing all of this through javascript so again effectively what we are doing is we are manipulating we are modifying css using javascript right so this is how we can get the access to the html element and this is how we can manipulate html and then this is how we can manipulate css with javascript so again for html we have inner text or inner html and then for css we have dot style so dot style dot property in camel case this is how it works right so let me just comment it out here css manipulation so manipulation basically means modification right and this is html so this is html manipulation which means modifying html on the screen and then modifying css on the screen so these are two different things that we can do with javascript 
we can modify HTML, we can modify CSS, right? Uh, in case you're not able to see the output on the screen, so I think this is from YouTube, um, Raju, you should be, you should put console.log, right? Once you put console.log, only then it will show in the console first. Second reason could be you are not writing the correct ID. So this ID special should be there in some HTML element. So you can see in my case, in this H1, I have an ID called special. So only then it will show up. Otherwise it will be empty. But the console output will only come if you put console.log. Otherwise nothing will show up in the console. Right. So this is basically the setup. Uh, again, we don't need this. You can skip using let also, var also. It will still work fine. We, I typically prefer let over var because we typically don't write global variables. We want local setup in most cases. So let is preferable. Always try to use let over var. But yes, you can also use var. That should also work fine. But again, the preference ideally is let. If you have to choose between the two, we would prefer using let. So that we don't create global values using where all the time. We might make one or two global variables, but not everything needs to be global, right? Uh, perfect. There is one more question. Let me take that. While working with script, HTML doesn't work. It works, Arvind you it works. Why, why not? If, if HTML does not work, then how can we detect the element? How can we modify the value? HTML, CSS, JavaScript, everything is working at the same time, right? So that's how we can see the result in the browser as well. This is HTML and then these modifications to CSS and of course the content are coming from JavaScript, right? So we are running everything at the same time, right? Perfect. So this is how we can modify CSS using JavaScript. We have seen both examples, one of HTML and one for CSS. Now the next major thing before we actually jump to making a mini project for today is event handling. Right. So event handling basically means what can we do, um, you know, or how can we detect what the user is performing on the screen? Let's say the user is hovering over an element or they are clicking on a button. So how can we detect that? Well, there are two different ways to do this. One is with the help of HTML attributes and then directly through JavaScript. So let me show them to you one by one. First, let us start with HTML attributes. So let us say that we are creating a simple application where what we want is whenever the user hovers over a heading like so, we want the background color to change, right? So whenever the user hovers over a heading, we want the background color to change. Right now, it cannot be done. You can see the background is not changing. We want to change that. And we don't want to do it through CSS. In CSS, there is an at, there is a setup if you know Right, we have something called hover. So if I just set it to H1 hover and then I give a background color, let's say I give a background color pink. Right? So now you will see whenever we hover over H1, it turns pink. This is a CSS way of doing it, right? But now imagine that we want to do the same setting with JavaScript. So for this, we have a couple of different options, right? There are two major options. Let me show them to you one by one. First up, whichever heading we want to change, we can apply some attributes to it. So the first attribute is on click. On click would mean what happens when the user clicks on something. This is typically a button or a link. In terms of content, we don't click on it. To detect hover, we have a property called on mouse over. So there is something called on mouse over. So this is the event that we are targeting on mouse over. Now, what do we want to happen? Well, we can directly either write the code here or we can create a function in JavaScript. So let's say change BG. This could be a function that we then write in JavaScript. So we can say function change BG. So this is the syntax of the function. We use the term function and then the name of the function and we put that name over here. So what that means is whenever the user takes their mouse over this heading, this particular function will be called, right? Now, what will this do? Well, we already know how to do this. We can say heading dot style dot background color. So that's background color. And let's change it to pink or let me put it yellow. Let's change it to yellow. 
Now, this will not work as expected because the heading that we have selected is a different one. Let me show you, right? So when I see my mouse is now at the bottom of the screen, as soon as I take it to the third heading, you will see the second heading's background lights up. Why is that? Well, that is because we are not selecting the correct heading, right? We are selecting the second heading, but the event is applied to the third heading. So what we can do is we can say get elements by tag name, and then we can put H1. Now we want to apply this to the second heading, right? So what we can do is we can comment this out. Let's say we don't want to change any of this. This can all stay like the same. And then we can say heading of one dot style dot background color equal to yellow. Let's see if this works. And when it works, I will tell you why. So now you will see as soon as I take my cursor over there, it will light up. Again, this is still highlighting the second heading. We should put heading of two. Now it will work properly. You can see as soon as I take my cursor over the third heading, it becomes yellow, right? So this is what we have just accomplished. How did we do this? Let me break it down for you. The first thing that we're doing is we are detecting all headings from the screen by tag name. So remember, whenever we use tag name, we are selecting multiple elements. This gives us a collection. Remember, we saw this in the console collection. Collection also refers to arrays. Right? Collection also refers to arrays. Uh, for the reference error, it is document dot not documents. So uh, Vishwana. Uh, Jay Raju, right? The uh, the object name is document, not documents. So remove that S and you should be good, right? So again, let me tell you what is going on over here. The first thing is in the HTML, we have created three H1 tags. Very simple, plain old HTML, right? Then what we have done is for the third heading, we have attached a new attribute, which we have learned just now. This attribute says on mouse over. So this is basically an event. Any HTML attribute that starts with on represents an event, an action that the user can perform. For example, on click, on double click, on mouse over, on mouse out, right? Any action that you can perform on the element. So on mouse over is the action of taking the cursor or the pointer to the element, right? So again, for example, if you're talking about H3, then if this is my cursor currently, when I take it over the heading, you can see this is on mouse over. So we are basically saying when the mouse comes over the heading, call this JavaScript function change BG. Now, what will this function do? Well, that is what we are writing over here in JavaScript. What we're doing is the first thing is we are saying choose all headings from the screen. How do we choose this? Well, we said document dot get elements by tag name H1. So here we're saying, go to the HTML document, pick all headings and bring them. So this headings collection, we also call this an array. You can see it says HTML collection, right? So this headings collection will currently have, how many headings can you tell me in the chat? How many headings will we select? Three, right? Perfect. Because we have three H1 headings and we are saying get elements by tag name. So get all H1s. We have three H1s on the screen. Right? So it will select three headings. Now, how do we access these three headings? Well, let me show the actual output before I show you the next line of code. So let's put this in the console again. Things. Now we'll see what is going on. So right click inspect, go to the console. You will see we have HTML collection three. This means a total of three headings have been selected, which is perfect. Now, if we just click on this expand button, you will see the first heading has a number zero. The second heading has a number one and the third heading has a number two. So basically, whenever we are working with a collection or an array, the indexing or the count starts from zero instead of one. Right. So that means if you want to choose the third heading on the screen, we have to use the count two. If you want to choose the first heading on the screen, the count will be zero. Right. So again, if you hover over it, this will make sense. Zero chooses the first heading on the left. If you see zero chooses the first heading, one chooses the second heading and two chooses the third heading. 
right? So if you see on the screen, this makes sense. Now we know exactly what needs to be done. So we have selected all three headings from the screen. Then we are saying, take the third heading, take the third heading. How can we access this with the help of the value two? We put that in square brackets. So we say headings of two. This is how we pronounce it. Headings of two, which means choose the third heading in the headings collection. So because it is size minus one, we start from zero. So for third heading, we have to put two size minus one, three minus one, two. So headings of two will choose this particular heading. That is where the function is called. So this is the correct choice, right? Now we say dot style dot background color equal to yellow. So effectively what this will do is whenever we take the mouse over this heading on the screen, it is going to call this function. This function is going to select that heading and it will change the background color to yellow, right? So again, if I just give you the same demo, if I just zoom and hover over it, you can see it will change the background color to yellow. This is how we can do this, right? Now, let us say that we want to change it one step further. When we remove the mouse from that element or, you know, let's say we take it out of the element, the background should go back to being transparent. How can we do this? Well, very simple. We can add one more attribute and that will be on mouse out. Right? So that's called on mouse out. And let's call it reset BG. Now we'll write one more function, which will be reset. So we, instead of change BG, we'll say reset BG. We select the same third heading. Instead of yellow, we'll put transparent. So this will reset the background once the mouse leaves. Let's test it. So I'll take the cursor over the heading and then remove it. You can see now it goes back to being transparent, right? So this functionality we have now achieved using JavaScript. We are not using any CSS code. Whatever we are writing is JavaScript code. And we have achieved this functionality as you can see, right? So this is how we can, um, you know, basically um, set this up. And now this is naturally we have done this for one heading. If you want to do it for all headings, you can create multiple functions and do that. So you will have to attach the correct event handler. For example, let's say we want to do the same thing for H1. Let's say we call it change BG1, for instance. Now, of course, there are better ways to do this. Of course, you know, there are much better ways to do this. But if I just give you a quick example, so we can say change BG1. Now, can you tell me what number should I put in over here instead of this two in order to be able to select the first heading on the page? So instead of headings of two, which value do we put there so that we can select the first heading on the page? Let's try to change it to pink. Zero, perfect, right? So we should put zero, that's exactly correct. So we put zero. And now when we hover over the first heading, you will see it turns pink. And then the third heading still has the same effect. Now, naturally, we will have to write one more reset function to make it back to transparent. But now you know how to do this, right? So this is how we can modify CSS and HTML. And this is also how we can detect events. Again, you have to be very careful with the syntax. We are not using round brackets here. These are square brackets, square brackets, right? Not normal brackets, not curly brackets, but square brackets. So this will only work if you use a square bracket. If you use any other kind of bracket, it will give you an error. So now it will not work as expected. And in the console, it will not give you any error, but you will see that this will not work as expected now, right? So again, that's the setup. You have to be very careful with the brackets. So we have to use square brackets and not round brackets. Right? As soon as we change this, you will see it starts working again. So this is how we can basically go ahead and attach what is known as event handling, right? So again, let me give you one task. You have to help me through it step by step. What I will do is I create a button. Let's say change color, change background, for example. Now there is this button. And what we want to do is we want to change the background of the page when the button is clicked. So I'll just comment everything that we have written so far. This code is no longer needed. I'll keep it as a reference. So when I upload it, you can take a look at it. But now you have to tell me the first step. So I will tell you the step. You have to tell me the code, right? So what we want to do is right now we have a button called change background. 
So we need two elements from the screen. We need the button and then we need the body because that's the background that we want to change. So the first question for you is what code should I write to select this button from the screen? There is no class. There is no ID to this button. It's just button. So can you write this in the chat? What code should I write to choose or select this button from the screen? Right. So I think there are a lot of people who are confused between different things. On click will come in later. First, we want to select the button. Right. On click will not select the button. Get element will select the button. Right. So I think again, a lot of you are just looking at what somebody else is typing and just copy pasting it. But either way, the first step is to select the button. How can we do this? Well, we can type buttons is equal to document dot get elements by tag name and the tag is button. So this will give us access to all the buttons, right? This gives us access to all the buttons. Perfect. Now out of these buttons, we want to extract this particular button. How can we do this? Out of all the buttons on the screen, we want to extract the first button. How can we do this? Again, you can put the code in the chat. Which code will help us choose or, you know, uh, pick this button from the screen? Again, I think, I think there's a lot of confusion here. We do not need to give it any class. We do not need to give it any ID because we have already selected all the buttons on the screen, which is available to us. So if I just show you console.log buttons, we don't need to modify HTML in any way. Why? Because if you see the console, we already have access to every button on the screen using this collection. We have access to all the buttons. There is only one button on the screen right now. So how can we change? How can we choose it? We can simply say buttons of zero. That's it. Right. So again, this line of code gives us access to every single button on the screen, which means we have access to this button as well. Now, how can we access this button? Well, we can access it because it is the first button on the screen. We can say buttons of zero. Why? Because array numbering starts with zero. So when we say buttons of zero, we get access to this particular button on the screen, right? So that's the setup, right? Perfect. Now, once this is done, we can then go ahead and work with it. Now that we have access to the button, what we want to do is we want to now attach the on click. So for this, we are going to write the function. Let's say change back ground. This is the name of the function, right? And here, now we realize that we want access to the body. So how can we do this? Again, we can say that body is equal to document equal to uh, second, this is equal to document dot get element by tag name. And this will be body, right? That's let's all body. Of course, there is only one body tag. We know this, but JavaScript does not. So now we can say body of zero dot how do we access the background color now can you tell me in the chat we have access to the body now what we want to do is we want to modify the background how can we do this style perfect we can say dot style and then dot background color and then we can change it to something like pink let's say for example Right. And then what do we do? We have to attach this function to the button. So now we put on click. This is the last step on click. What we want to do is we want to call the change background function. What will this function do? It will take the body element from the screen and change its background color. Again, it will take the first body element. In this case, of course, we only have one body, but typically if you have multiple divs and other things, you can see this works. Right. So as soon as I click on the button, the background changes to pink. Naturally, when we load the page, it will be reset. We can click again to change it to pink. Right. Now, just like this, we have a couple of other events as well. For example, let us say we have something called on BBL click. 
which is on double click. So let's take this and let me reset. Let's call it reset background, right? So this time what we can do is we can change it back to trans erase, right? Now, if I just go ahead and, you know, call this one reset background on double click, then on single click, it should make it pink and on double click, it should reset. Let's test it. So this is pink. Now I will double click and you can see it goes back to being transparent. Again, pink, double click, transparent, single click, pink, double click, transparent. This is how we can handle events using JavaScript, right? So this is the setup. Is this clear? Does this make sense? So now let's take some questions on this and then we'll move to the project part that's coming up. But yes, uh, let me know if this is clear. And if you have any questions, you can now put this in the chat. Um, I'll also, I'm also looking at YouTube chat. I'm also looking at the Zoom chat. Uh, you can use white also, no problem, Arvind, jewelry, uh, white will also work fine. But the default color is transparent. So that's why I'm using transparent. It means no color. White will also work fine in this case. Again, Sai Shankar, the whole point is we can do this through JavaScript. That is what you're focusing on. We can also, you know, um, basically change the colors in CSS, but... To apply multiple styles, you can just write the code one by one in the next line, right? So for example, if you want to, in addition to the background color, if you want to change something else, you can also just write that in the second line. And then, you know, as many styles as you want, you can just write them one or the other, and that should uh, work fine. Okay, let's see if there are any more questions. Again, you cannot do this in the mobile phone. So um, I've been saying this from the first session onwards, you need a system for this. So please get access to a system. You cannot do this on a phone. Yes, Pavan, that is the whole point. So we can use HTML. We can basically perform all HTML and CSS tasks using JavaScript as well, right? So by default, we don't want to do this because it's a lot more code. See, if you, if you see the code now, it's a lot of code right? to this can be done much easily in CSS in terms of just like on Vover and other such effects, we can very easily do that in CSS, but in real world situations, we want pop-up boxes. We want sliders. We want all those things which require functionality through JavaScript. So that's, that's why we want to use it. Uh, we are putting body of zero because again, when we choose get elements, it will give us a collection. Even if there is a single element, it will return a collection. So we want to access the first element out of that collection. So that's body of zero. That's why we put body of zero. Uh, no, uh, no, this is Asya. CSS and JavaScript are not same at all. We have already discussed this so many times. HTML is for adding content. CSS is for styling and arranging the content. And JavaScript is for adding functionality. So they are three completely different languages. We can control HTML, CSS or modify that through JavaScript. But that does not mean CSS and JavaScript are the same. They are not. They are two completely different languages. Uh, so Pramila con uh, console is basically that part of the browser where we can see the output. So if I right click and go to inspect, this takes us to developer tools. There is a tab here in the developer tools called console. This gives us access to all the JavaScript code. So you can see this one console. This is basically what we should open up. And that is what we are saying. So when we put console.log, it basically gives us the output over here in the console. That's what it is. Right? That's why we say console. That's the name of the section uh, in the browser. So if we just, you know, write something like this, uh, let me just see over here, let's console.log of buttons. So the output that we see, you can see over here, it shows up in the console section of the developer tools. That is why the name is console. Very simple. Right? That's why it's called console because it is literally called console in the browser. 
नो वेंकी यू कैनॉट यूज दिस इज फ्रॉम यूट्यूब लाइव वेंकी यू कैनॉट यूज जस्ट बॉडी इन स्टेड ऑफ बॉडी ऑफ जीरो दिस विल नॉट वर्क एज एक्सपेक्टेड बिकॉज बॉडी इज अ कलेक्शन यू कैनॉट गिव स्टाइल टू द एंटायर कलेक्शन यू कैन ओनली गिव इट टू वन एलिमेंट एट अ टाइम सो यू हैव टू पुट बॉडी ऑफ जीरो अदरवाइज दिस विल नॉट वर्क एज एक्सपेक्टेड Uh, no, it is not possible, Rudrama. You cannot write two bodies for an HTML element, but JavaScript does not know that. And it could be that we are working with a div or a section, which we can have multiple times. That right? we can write as many divs or as many um, different um, you know sections as we want. So let's say instead of body, we want to change the background color of a div or of a section. So we then we'll have to say section of zero, div of zero, stuff like that. So that is how this works. Uh, perfect let me take one more question and then we'll move to the next part so sunil uh, is a, sunil has a good question the question is what happens if the same style is applied for multiple times so which style will be chosen well the style that shows up at the end that will be chosen right so let me give you a simple example let us put two styles here only the first style let's change it to blue and then immediately after it we are putting another style that is changing it to pink so now if you notice it will still turn pink right if you go to the inspect and if you see let me choose the body so here you can see background color pink right so it is basically not applying blue or rather pink is applied after blue so that is the latest so again the style which is later on in the code will get applied the style before it will not work so that is how this will be and yes that's that's basically everything uh, for people who are getting the error reference error document not found all of that again please make sure you type it very correctly it is lowercase d and the spelling is document this will only work in a script file it will not work in html file it will not work in javascript file so it has to be called dot uh, it has to be in a javascript file and finally you have to start running the html file you don't have to start the script you have to open the html file only because the script is connected to html so the only file that we run is the html file the script will automatically run right so again for everybody who's getting a reference error make sure you put that in the script file and then run the html file in the browser so jewelry the whole setup that we get i think arvind the whole setup that we get is through dom right dom lets us control access elements attach event handlers everything that we have seen right now is happening because of the document this is what dom is document object model so this document is coming from dom that's what gives us access to everything that we have seen so far right perfect there is one final thing that i want to discuss today before we wrap up and that basically is going to be uh, this section alerts and prompts we have already seen this in the previous section so it's actually very simple as you might remember right we have simple methods so just like the document we have another object called window this window gives us access to a bunch of things again let me comment this out and let's focus on the window bit now window gives us two specific things which we use very often the first is alert we don't really need to use window if you just type in alert javascript is smart enough to know that it has to call window.alert but the correct definition is this window.alert so just like we have the document object we also have window object so this window dot alert will basically say the pop up it brings up the alert box on the screen this is important for example right now if we just go back to the page you will see this pop up and you can see this is the text as well this is important this will be the first thing to show up and you cannot see anything inside the page you cannot see the content of the page until you have dismissed or interacted with the alert so until we say okay we cannot see the change background button notice very carefully i will refresh the page now so you can see the change background button is actually hidden and the page keeps on loading if you notice the loading sign on the top left here the page keeps on loading until we interact with the alert so alert is the first thing that shows up on the page no matter where you write it in the script 
right? So even if you have all other functionality written, alert will still show up before all of that. As you can see, alert is always the first thing to show and then the rest of the functionality will work, right? So that is your alert. Okay. Again, it is basically a, a pop-up that shows up as the first thing on the page before we can interact with any other section of the page that is alert. Finally, we have another thing which is called prompt. So prompt is also like an alert, but it allows us to take input from the user, right? Prompt is also like alert. It allows us to take input from the user. So for instance, we can say window.prompt and we can say what is your name, for example. So this prompt basically gives us a section. It will show up after the alert now. And you can see once the alert is gone, prompt shows up. And here it gives us an input field. So we can actually type something in over here. That's the prompt. We can say OK. And we can actually st store this value as well. So let us say that we want to store the value. So we can say username is equal to. And then let's just print it out. So let's say console.log um, username. Now, if we check the result, so let's refresh. This is our prompt. Let's put John and let's also open up the console. So the console will say, for example, if I just open this up, the console will show us the username that we have read from the prompt. As you can see, John. Now we can always put this in the heading like we know, right? We have done this so many times uh, now that we can, if we just enable our H1 selection code, then we can say, hello, John. It will be dynamic. We can change it on the screen after the prompt has been given. Right? So that is the power of JavaScript. We can get some input from the user and we can manipulate those, right? For example, say I put Jane. Now we can take this from JavaScript and also put it in the body. Right? We have seen how to do that. <laughs> so this is the entire setup. This is alert and prompt, right? So these are a couple of things that we have, you know, discussed today about um, how to handle the document object model, the DOM using JavaScript. It's a very, very important construct and it is a very important concept as well. It is something that is again asked a lot in interviews, especially if you have put JavaScript as a skill uh, in your resume, you will definitely be asked about document object model. So things like get element by ID, how do you change styles? Um, how do you choose an, a value from the collection, right? Alert and prompt. These are some of the most standard topics or questions that are discussed, um, you know, in a resume as well, right? You don't need any extensions for this. Hari. You just need one extension, which is called code runner. So you just have to install this one extension. It looks like this, right? This is the symbol or the logo dot run. So you just have to put code runner and that's it. So this is the only extension you need to work with JavaScript. Uh, coming to Chrome extensions that you can have. So you can actually go to the, you know, extensions um, in Chrome and you can actually search. So if you go to the extension store over here, you can search for DOM tree or things like that. And you will find a lot of different extensions, which will let you view the DOM tree. You can see there are so many different extensions, right? So I think this one should be good. Let's see. Uh, let's see if there are some screenshots. Mm, okay. I think this is not what we are looking for. We are looking for a very simple view. So again, this is, this looks good. So we can just say add to Chrome. Right. And then install the extension. So this should take a minute done. Now, if I go back to our document and refresh this, okay, then we can go to extensions and enable that extension. Uh, yes, this one. So you can see now this converts our entire HTML to the DOM tree. You can see, right. It has HTML. Then we have head and body. We can also minimize head. So focus on the body. And then we have the comment, then we have this comment. So it is also showing us all the comments, right? And then we can see the script as well. We can minimize that. If I just zoom in, you can see it has a button which says change background. So this is how we can actually see all the components. This is a, one example. You can also just download a couple of them. I don't need this, so I will remove it from Chrome. But again, you can go to the Chrome store. So to access this, you can first click on this extensions button. 
that's over here, right? And then go to manage extensions. This, this gives you access to the Chrome web store. So go to the Chrome web store here. Just search for DOM, right? DOM tree. And you will see a bunch of different extensions. This is also, I think one of the good ones, tree map. You can see it's five out of five. And again, you can just add to Chrome and add extension. That's it. Now we should be able to see this. So go back, refresh, and then just choose that extension from the list. It shows up right over here. So we can just, you know, uh, open that up and we should be good to go. So this is what the whole setup is, right? You can install different extensions. I think this is for a mobile phone. You can install one for a laptop or meant for web. Perfect. So this is what we have in terms of, you know, working with a uh, Dom. And that's basically what we have for this particular session. So again, the session title that we have is document object model for people who are asking about this. Here is the title on the screen. It's called document object model. Now let's quickly jump to the questions that we have, right? So again, uh, Rudrama, I think I've answered your question. You can install a Chrome extension and that should give you access to the DOM tree, right? Perfect. Now let's jump to our questions. So here is the first question. Again, you can put this in the chat, uh, put the correct answer in the chat, and then we'll discuss the uh, correct answer as well. So here we go. Uh, the question is on the screen. I'll wait for a minute. I'll give you a minute to think. Think very carefully. Please read the question properly and then answer. And then we'll discuss the correct answer on the screen. Okay, so the correct answer here is option number three, that's get element by ID, right? So again, this is the one that we use, option three. Perfect, here is the second question. So again, read this carefully and then answer. Take a minute, read it carefully and then answer. All right. Yes. So the correct answer here is option one. That's inner HTML. We've also seen inner text. That is also a way to get this done, right? So inner HTML or inner text, both of these are correct responses. And that brings us to the end of this particular topic. Now, uh, in the next session, we are going to continue that discussion and we're going to try to build something like this, right? So what you see on the screen is a to-do list application. And this is what we'll be aiming to build in the next um, session, right? So that's what we are working with. And then you will be given an assignment based on something like this. So that's going to be your next assignment giving, given to you on Friday. I am hoping that you have completed the first assignment. I've been telling you the deadline is Friday. Today is Wednesday. So by Friday, you have to submit that one. Again, we've discussed that the grading will be done later. You have to submit or upload your HTML and CSS files. I hope you have done that. Let me know in the chat if you have completed the first assignment. Uh, the next assignment will be given to you very soon. Probably Friday or Monday, we'll be sharing that with you, right? So I hope you have already submitted your first assignment so that you're ready for the second one. The second assignment will be based on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Uh, specifically the document object model. And this is what we are going to get. Uh, Rahul, again, like I said, don't worry about the zero marks. It is going to be manually checked later. So for now, you just have to upload the files and submit. Okay, that's the setup. Again, the assignment links and everything is available on GitHub. You have access to the GitHub repository. If you don't have access, then here is the link on the screen please take a screenshot, go to this link and you will find everything over there, right? Perfect. So try to finish off the first assignment by Friday. We'll also 
I'll also give you an update on the project part on Friday, right? So yes, that's what we'll discuss in the next one. We'll start by building the to-do list application and then discuss a couple more concepts along the way. Um, so yes, that's what's coming up. And yeah, I'll see you guys on Friday. Have a great day. Bye-bye.